earth angels thank you so much for being here and joining me today i just wanted to vlog a random day in my life i have two videos that i filmed i didn't love all of them so i wanted to insert the clips that i did like into this video and i'll be redecorating my room a little bit so that i would vlog hello i hope your day is going well i hope that your breath is deep and that your thoughts and your mind are being very kind to you today. I'm eating some ramen noodles. I made miso and then I didn't have that many ramen noodles so I added soba noodles as well and it's really good. Mm. I've had this rug for a while. It's a Moroccan rug. thought it would be too much to add to my room but I want to experiment with layering it between my other rugs. I think it could be really cute. It's definitely more busy but I like it. It's fun. It's fun to try new things. I love using wine bottles as candle holders. It just makes sense and I'm going to be replenishing mine today. I had some anxiety today. I feel like I still kind of have anxiety and that's why I'm cleaning and redoing my room a little bit. I cleaned my whole room. I cleaned and scrubbed the floors in the house and I just feel like I'm kind of procrastinating a little bit on other things that I have to do, but it's very necessary for me to replenish my soul right now just to do things that feel good and not what I have to do. I think I want to put the smaller candles in instead. And I think that I have anxiety because I went to sleep with anxiety just about family things and being a little behind on deadlines. and. That is a big no-no. <laughs> don't go to sleep sad, don't go to sleep angry or anxious. It just doesn't always work. I mean, sometimes depression apps really make a difference though. So it really just depends. I know that I can do breath work and extend my exhale and make my nervous system feel calm. And I just am kind of dealing with a lot of family things that I don't want to talk about. I feel like I used to be so open about like all of my family history, traumas, and I still am open to talking about that, but only when it's my own experience. I don't want to be like exposing people in my family or releasing any of their like <laughs> private information. <laughs> There's that quote, I think it's by Ram Dass, if you think you're enlightened, spend a week with your family. But it's honestly more just like a heartbreaking realization that our parents have been growing with us this whole time like as we've been growing up we've also been growing alongside our parents and as you get into your early 20s maybe for some people sooner you just start to realize that your parents aren't going to be here forever and start to take note of the ways that they slow down and different things can happen with their health and oh it's just so heartbreaking and I keep wishing that I could go back to my younger self with my level of awareness now and speak to my family differently or have a different, just be able to help them through their healing, you know, before things got any worse or, yeah, I guess it's just wishing I could go back in time and have more cherished moments with the people that I love and now it almost feels like it's too late because they're not the same people that I grew up with anymore. <sighs> so I'm just really letting myself sit with all the feelings that I'm feeling and channeling it into some sort of creation or momentum. And I'm fostering kittens right now while my house is two cute kittens and I want to introduce you to them. Okay, so in here we have Lumeria and Onyx. <laughs> So we basically just met a friend at this dance who had her kitties in a box and we were cuddling with them and she said that she needed someone to foster them for two months while she was gone. And we already have three kitties at the house, tons of cat food and experience so we decided to take them on for the next two months. <laughs>
grateful that BetterHelp is sponsoring today's video. Is there something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals, such as daily voices of smallness or past trauma that you're working through? BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with a licensed professional therapist. You can start communicating within 48 hours. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional counseling done securely online. There is a broad range of expertise in BetterHelp's 15,000 plus counselor network, which may not be available to you in your area. The service is available worldwide and you can log on at any time and send a message to your counselor. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses, plus you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions so you don't have to wait in uncomfortable waiting rooms as you do with traditional therapy. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great and therapeutic matches so they make it easy and free to change counselors if needed. It's more affordable than traditional counseling and financial aid is available. BetterHelp wants you to start feeling happier today. So visit betterhelp.com slash Hitomi, that's better H-E-L-P, and join the over 1 million people taking charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. And you can get 10% off of your first month at betterhelp.com slash Hitomi. I'll have it linked down below. Psychotherapy is so important and validating and is where a lot of those intense stories and thoughts can be unpacked with full validity. Wow, see this bad boy. I know everything is going to be okay and I'm not catastrophizing, but it's just a feeling of slight overwhelm, just emotionally more than anything and having a lot of climate anxiety as well, which I don't always know how to act upon or what to do with that kind of anxiety because it just seems like there are these big superpowers in control of burning down rainforests and oil fracking and releasing fossil fuels and methane gases and so many things that feel so out of my control and I know that every single one of us has an impact and can make a difference and I know that the 1% thrives off of the working class but it still just feels like what more can I do beyond using my dollar as my vote and shopping as sustainably or as little as possible and growing my own food, reducing my plastic footprint <laughs> it can make me feel a little hopeless and that can cause anxiety or even depression and I feel like a lot of people are experiencing that as we really just look at the research and what's going on in the world. And part of me thinks that aliens could potentially come down and save us in our final hour. There have been a lot of UFO sightings and confirmation from people in the government that we have been in communication with aliens. I'll have this article linked down below saying that there is an alien representative from the Galactic Federation and a representative from the Earth and they've been talking. My friend from the military Terry said that aliens like to dip their spaceships in the ocean. That's why there's a lot of sightings around here or postal locations. They've been here this whole time. I've known it. I've felt it. Ever since I was younger, I would lie on my trampoline and whisper, take me with you, take me with you, because I wanted to <laughs> escape my reality. And now as an adult, I kind of worry that they will hear those prayers and come for me now. And I'm not quite sure if I want to go now, but I'm open to it as long as I could bring a buddy, you know? <laughs> and I went, I woke up in the middle of the night a few nights ago, and when I got back into bed, this voice in my head kept telling me, you were just abducted by aliens, because I was having really vivid dreams. And then I woke up, went back to bed, and it just kept repeating over and over again, you were just abducted by aliens, and it was echoing in my head. It's kind of exciting, really gets you out of this third dimensional <laughs> consciousness of thinking that everything that we see is all that exists. There's so much more than meets the eye. Aliens are among us. And I hope this doesn't freak anyone out. I find some solace from that thought. This information has just become so public and people didn't even react because so many unexpected things happened this year that it's just like, okay, we're a little bit desensitized to our reality shifting in ways we didn't expect. This neon sign says gyoza or dumplings. I really like it. I know anxiety manifests differently for everyone, 
and I feel very almost used to my anxiety like I just breathe through it just witness and watch it it's definitely uncomfortable but it's just more of an inconvenience than this like extremely life-altering experience like it used to be when I would self-harm I can do all the things that I need to do they're just not as pleasant I don't feel as good in my mind or body but I can still be positive and still get things done and I'm just a little bit more tender with myself. Okay, I like this little corner. I like putting plants in front of a mirror because it just, I don't know, it just feels right. I like that. And now I want to play for you the videos that I never uploaded. I was going to do a whole video dedicated to the videos that I didn't think were good enough to post, but I get so frustrated sometimes when I spend hours filming and editing something that doesn't work out that I will delete it, delete every trace of it from my memory cards, my hard drive, the rough cut, the final cut. So I only have two of those videos, and this first one is an outfit of the week video. I filmed it in New York. I thought it was really cute, but I didn't love all of the outfits. So I'm going to be showing you the outfits that I did love and that I do feel are He told me approved so I'll play that right now I wanted to show you some outfits I've been wearing recently to gallivant around New York City walking around New York in a fit It just hits differently. This first one features this thrifted corset. It's super cropped It's very meshy and sheer and not supportive at all, but I'm just really here for it. I love this mint green color and it really complements the skirt really well. This is a piece my sister actually gave to me. I'm wearing my mint colored sneakers that are thrifted. These are New Balances. And this is pretty much the, the look. What do I even have in here? I have two big books. My Polaroid camera, which I love. This is like my top layering piece so that I don't get harassed or stalked. Um, I put this big trench coat on. So I really like this outfit. It's really comfortable, but also pretty sexy at the same time. This next outfit has pretty much been my uniform since coming back to the city. It's really comfortable, a little bit more androgynous, and just really practical, minus the shoes. I'm wearing this thrifted mischief tank top, and then I'm wearing these pants. Our second hand by the brand Urban Outfitters. They're pretty heavy duty, and I just love the color blocking cargo aesthetic of these. They're slightly oversized on me, and I just really adore them. I genuinely use these pockets, and I think cargo pants are amazing. And then I'm just wearing these platform sandals by the brand Eunice. And this little bracelet that I'm wearing is by the brand With Mercy, and I usually wear it every day with everything. This next outfit is more of a nighttime look and I was just really excited to style this thrifted Victoria's Secret bodysuit. I've never owned something like this that actually fits my waist and my boobs. It's not the most supportive but I just love the maroon velvet and it has a sheer back and cute little bow ties on the strap so I'm really into it. I'm wearing it with my thrifted purse and some necklaces. The top one is thrifted and the gold one is by the brand Indie The Label. These pants are old Zara. I feel like they just have a really nice tailored fit and I'm wearing them with some Topshop heels that I got a while ago. Recently picked them up from my storage unit and I feel like it's a look. This next outfit is really simple. It's just a matching yoga set by the brand Everlane. And then I just have my favorite gold pieces on, which helps to spruce the look up a little bit. This is kind of like my travel outfit. I'm wearing this with my slides, and this is the base of the outfit. I can run errands and then stop by any park and drop into a yoga flow. And then on top of this, I wore this outfit when it was pretty cold, and I wore my cardigan and trench coat combo on top. I think it works especially because these are in a similar colorway and it turns a basic yoga set into something a little bit more chic and stylish. Thank you for putting 
keeping up with this ever-changing lighting, but this look is one of my favorites just because it's styling a piece I'm not used to. Um, starting off with this secondhand sheer mesh top. I wish I didn't have to wear a bra under it. And then the main part of this outfit is the skirt, which looks like this. This is a secondhand piece from ThreadUp, and I love the little side slit going on. It has some lacing on the side, and it's just a full denim maxi skirt. It's giving me Y2K energy, and I just have it paired with my golf boots that I used to wear all the time. And I just picked them up from storage and I'm just so happy to have them back. I don't know, maybe it's kind of weird, but I really like it. I'm not like most girls. And the day that I wore this was super rainy and cold, so this is how I layered it up with my thrifted little cardigan. My trench coat on top of that, which really insulated any body heat and I was definitely really warm and honestly sweating when I wore this. Those are some of the outfits I've been wearing recently. I hope this gave you some inspiration and honestly it's just really exciting to go into your wardrobe and find a new way to style an old piece. And and this next video was one that I wanted to film about love. I always try to have an unsponsored video in between a sponsored video. And this one, I had just a little bit of time to film and I didn't really plan out all of my talking points like I normally like to do. So I was repeating some things that I have discussed in previous videos about relationships and I didn't think it was enough new lessons and tools so I pretty much cut out any repetitive stuff and left in good insights or experiences that I felt like would be still potent to share so I'll play that video right now. Falling in love is one of the most powerful experiences because it calls every aspect of you to complete presence. You're on this teetering edge of extreme bliss and extreme despair. You're letting so much of you be seen. When it comes to love I'm such a hopeless romantic that no matter how many times I've been hurt when I fall in love again and maybe this is by design of the emotion of love but it's like I'm loving for the first time. It's like I I fully believe in the power of love again. I have only dated people who meet me at my level more and more, who are more romantic, who um, are really committed to their own personal growth, who are emotionally mature and have these kind of like developed aspects of their life, which I also have. And the reason for that, that I haven't kind of like gone back to anyone who's gonna emotionally abuse me is because I am stating that expectation. I'm not settling for anything less than I deserve. I don't want to beg for respect which I've done in past relationships like if you have to beg someone to listen to you to not emotionally react to you sharing your feelings says that you're asking too much don't beg them to change just see that that's what they're doing that's what they can give and move on honestly peacefully too like I see that this is how you can meet me in this partnership and I need more and I know that that desire is valid I know I'm capable of being met in all these other ways so I'm I'm going to peacefully bow out and there's nothing wrong with the other person but you have needs that deserve to be fulfilled and respected. So let's talk about fears because fear is an energy that can infiltrate a partnership, a room, a society. And for me, I don't like the experience of fear and I have a lot of fears around relationships. Honestly, I fear forever and I also fear losing someone, losing my luster to a partner. And these things I think are really natural, especially if you're someone who's in a long-term partnership or thinking about getting married, it's okay to feel afraid of maybe one day not loving your partner or afraid that you'll get bored with each other or just afraid of how life will mold you and if you'll be strong enough to move through it together. And I think that depending on your partnership, I feel really comfortable talking and vocalizing my fears out loud. I do this with my friends as well. Anything we're afraid of, we speak them out and it's really liberating because we realize that they're not happening in the present moment. We realize that there's nothing wrong with these fears, which is where a lot of pain can come in. It's all valid and once you welcome that and you're like, oh yeah, of course I'm afraid. Like I've never seen a successful marriage. If you do this with your partner, you can have kind of like a connection date and this tool that I learned recently is to 
pretend that there's a glass window between you and your partner and any stories, any unspoken fears that come up are like little stains, fingerprints on the window. And in these connection dates, anything that is lingering between you two, you vocalize them and kind of clear it up. You can also write this down. You can burn them in a fire after. Best thing to keep things juicy in a partnership is presence, truly being present with the fears, with the joy, with the fact that maybe something needs to change with your dreams and your own personal path to ascension, like being present with all of that. Things can't be boring. Things can't be lackluster because you are on a mission here on earth. You are focused on all aspects of your life, the full spectrum healing, the service that you wish to bring to humanity. It's just growing with someone, not growing into someone. Know that you're free and that it's your responsibility and your job to love yourself first. It just feels so incredible to source your stability and your love and your knowing and your joy, excitement for life from within and not seek it externally because you're the most stable thing that you have in your life, truly. I had this moment yesterday at this ecstatic dance where I was dancing, my friends and I got there early so there weren't too many people and it was in broad daylight and I forgot what it felt like to be witnessed in my movement. I forgot what it felt like to be perceived. I started to just feel so aware of other people's gaze <laughs> and get kind of in my head about it, which then restricted my movement and didn't make me feel as comfortable in my body. And then that thought led to another thought about this person showing up who has been kind of telling these lies about me and just feeling like I didn't want a confrontation or to see them. And I started to physically just get so uncomfortable. And in that moment, I knew I needed to walk away. And I took a moment, this was a dance outside, and I stopped by this little pond area on this grassy knoll and I just sat there meditating. I witnessed, you know, this fear of this person showing up. I witnessed this fear of being seen by people and wondering if I'm enough or if I look good enough or thinking about the fact that I'm breaking out, you know, and processing all these thoughts like, okay, so these are exactly the reasons why I'm feeling a little bit smaller, scared. Okay, I see that and I see how my body's responding. I don't really want to dance. I feel like I just want to go home now, even though I've only been here for like an hour. Okay, and then this is what I did. <laughs> Not only did I extend my breath, so I inhaled for four counts and exhaled for eight counts to calm my nervous system, but then I started vocally expressing my healing journey, and it went something like, I am on a journey of healing and reclamation of all aspects of myself. Sometimes I will feel afraid. I am on a healing journey and sometimes I will get lost in the story. I am on this healing journey and sometimes I will feel afraid. I am on this healing journey and sometimes I won't get things right. I am on this healing journey and sometimes I will hurt those I love. I am on this healing journey and I am learning to forgive myself. I am on this healing journey and I am learning to change my mind. I am on this healing journey and I know that in some moments I will feel small again and that's okay. I am on this healing journey and I know that I will feel strength like I haven't felt it before in my life. I'm on this healing journey and I know that love is the truth and I just kept you know affirming all of these truths to myself and I felt so filled with love it's making me cry just thinking about how quickly this shift took place and all I had to do was acknowledge what was there and then I went back out to the main dancing area and I danced this dance of liberation of wild the dance that you dance when you fully call upon all aspects of yourself with equanimity, presence, and love. And it was really powerful. I just feel so grateful anytime that I can use my tools and not get lost in certain narratives. It's like really reinforcing new neural pathways that I don't have to act in the ways that I used to, which was self-harming and spiraling or maybe projecting things onto people I loved. Okay, I just got the sweetest message from my sweetheart. It says, and I really have to say, baby, you elevate me so much. You are literally more than I could ever dream of. You are my dream come true. My heart's calling and manifest. I love you so much and cannot wait to continue exploring this life with you and having fun. Your passion is unparalleled. Your beauty is unworldly. You inspire me to be my greatest person, my greatest version. I love you.
I'm tearing up right now. As an introvert, I could easily isolate myself for a long time. I could have no partner, I could have one friend, and that would be so easy for me, and I would feel so content, but my growing edge is in being around other people, learning to feel safe in community, and when I'm entering into partnerships or new friendships, so much comes up for me. I, it's, it's scary to learn to trust people. It's scary to feel seen by other people. I literally have chills right now, and I feel excited about that opportunity to grow and not only rest into my introvertedness but rise to the occasion and I think maybe for people who are the opposite who really thrive off of social connection but are afraid of being alone that's a really big area of learning that you can also be excited for like why do I feel afraid to be alone what is so scary about the silence let me be curious about this how can we move with complete ease and clear our channels you know love is something that can beckon us out of years of programming and that is like such a big molding opportunity and it's freaking terrifying and I think that's it for today's video thanks for hanging out with me I feel like I always want people to know what's actually on my heart and have that be in real time and I feel like there are a lot of people in the wellness world who don't necessarily always share when they have anxiety or sadness again it's more so after we're done coping with it and dealing with it that we're like oh yeah so this is how you get through it and this is what I did but it's very rare that we're in the moment of depression of anxiety and like yo I'm feeling this and it doesn't feel good and I don't know what to do and my breath is short and so I just appreciate being able to share and maybe you wouldn't even be able to tell a difference from how I normally speak or am on camera but I I feel it <laughs> nothing that we can feel is wrong at all and so I just feel excited to celebrate and witness every single emotion without shame or guilt around it. If I notice it happening every single day, feelings of despair every single day for weeks or months at a time, that's definitely when I would take a more serious action. But I'm going to end this video here so I can edit it and I appreciate you so much. I cherish you so deeply and I hope to see you in a video soon. Bye!